Three weeks have passed. This morning, Captain Whitlock received a simple memorial service. Her body was consigned to a necropolis train bound for the serene mausoleum. Now you sit, with a handful of her relatives in the threadbare offices of her solicitors. A methodical notary is reading the will. The captain was wealthy once, but squandered her capital on mysterious expenses before her expedition to the Blue Kingdom. Listen to the end. The captain's relatives, from whom she was mostly estranged, are clearly wondering why you are here. Oh, by the way, this. Uh, the captain was wealthy, squandered her capital on mysterious expenses before her expedition to the Blue Kingdom. Going to the Blue Kingdom was obviously of the utmost importance to Whitlock. I mean, they're dying with ash pouring out of their mouth and flames and all that stuff. Or, I'm sorry, not dying, they're dead. <laughs> We're reading the will. They died from those things, from horrible burns and wounds, and they still said it was worth it. And based on this, spending all their capital on mysterious expenses before the expedition to the Blue Kingdom sounds like they basically put all their eggs in one basket. It sounds like they didn't really intend to come back. In a final codicil, the notary announces, Captain Whitlock confirmed that possession of the Orphean was to pass to its first officer. He peers at you with dry, gray eyes. This includes a certain black box contained in the Orphean's hold. Captain Whitlock's final request was that, at a time of your choosing, you transport said box to an address in London. He hands you an address card and deposit it there. You are not to look inside. She gave no explanation. And that's it. You're captain now. The Orphean is yours. Captain Whitlock's legacy. We can investigate the black box at New Winchester. Could take the box to London. Or you could sell it and be done. <laughs> that would be really callous. You have been bequeathed a large black box which once belonged to Captain Whitlock. And the savings of Captain Whitlock were a hundred sovereigns, which really is not much money. Considering how much we got from that one, uh, like, Reach Marauder ship that we blew up. Yeah, we got 49 from that, so that's not much. Alright, that's kind of it. We're kind of just left on our own to do whatever we want at this point. There's two main categories of things that we could do at New Winchester. We can either do kind of story stuff in this tab. All of these things. Fix, investigate the black box. I'm not sure why these two options are here. They're not really stories things, or are they? I don't know. Opportunity, ambition, an old friend, recruit uh, somebody to help us explore the city, all sorts of things like that, and then there's shops if you just want to buy or sell. Let's do story stuff first. Let's, let's just explore the city. The smoggy, clanking, singing, stamping, thronging, frantic heart of the Reach. Okay, the heart of the Reach, so New Winchester is like, well, the heart of the Reach. Maybe the biggest or most populated station out of all these places in the Reach? An ever-expanding port of soot-smudged glass and bright steel spilling across a drifting mist-wrapped archipelago. Its factories thunder, its engine sheds ring with hammers and hiss with steam, Locomotives chug into sightings for repair, or flare across the sky and away into the high wilderness. Can I just stop for a second and just mention again, just like with Sunless Sea, the writing is incredible. It's just amazing. It's so, it's so emotive, evocative. Like just this, just this line here, an ever-expanding port of soot-smudged glass and bright steel spilling across a drifting, mist-wrapped archipelago. That's just fucking beautiful. An opportunity, learn about trading. Success successful skyfarers fund their expeditions by dabbling in trade, inquire whether there are any good trading opportunities available. Yeah, I remember trading was the main way that I made money in Sunless Seas. 
Let's do that. Some of these things are new, by the way, compared to when I did this before. This is where I ended the game. I just kind of came here and did some of the stuff in the city and then stopped. I, I didn't actually go past New Winchester. And some of these things are different. I don't know if they're just simply randomized or um, if perhaps my change in ambition to seek the truth maybe changed some of these things as well. Yeah, let's learn about trading. Oh, did that cost money? Oh no, it didn't cost money. It's just unlocked when you don't have a trading opportunity. On the Pedal Trail. A porter at the station advises you to visit the nearby pub, the promise of days, and talk to the seasoned captains there. They keep their ears to the ground. They'll know about an opportunity or two. Visiting the promise of days is one of the options when exploring the city. Okay, so it's kind of like a tutorial thing, just hinting that I can get trade things there. Let's let's visit the promise of days. Oh my god, look at this over here. Oh, I can't I can't mouse over that or it blocks it, but that is quite a uh, I guess that's the bartender probably. They have a strange bottle that looks like it has a ghostly figure inside of it. They're wearing a cool mask. They they have oh my god, they have a rat with an eye patch on their shoulder. Does it talk too, just like our dividend bat? This game's so fucking cool. Old pistons gleam on the walls. The shelves are crowded with mementos from across the sky. The clientele raise their voices to be heard above the comforting clamor of the adjacent engine yards. Introduce ourselves. Go elsewhere. Ask them how to make your fortune through trade. Can't do that. Must first acquaint myself with the seasoned captains. Yeah, let's introduce ourselves. Four are gathered at their usual table. The masked citizen, a uh, libertine, polymath, po polymath, polymath, and pioneer of the neo-nocturnal artistic school. The bedevilled didact, a scholar haunted by his discoveries. The plucky baroness, explorer, collector, These are some hard words. <laughs> Philatelist and Spatchcocker Meg, who hunts monsters. Of course, everything out here is jolly dangerous, says the Baroness. Few risk the skies, so news of distant ports is valuable. Collect port reports from the places you visit and deliver them to Victory Hall or Company House. The more you turn in at once, the more they'll pay. Look for other opportunities on the way, advises the masked citizen. Passengers who want transport, rich men in need of bloody work, etc. I guess I'll ask them how to make my fortune through trade. Between them, they've carried uh, Navaratine gemstones from Eleutheria, souls to the Blue Kingdom, and raw hours to London. Have they tips? Right. I have a vague memory that... Hours, time, was actually a unit of thing that you could, like, trade or buy or do something with. Yeah. The Undersea and the Reach and everything here, they're very odd places. Ah, the Didact says, fiddling with his innumerable talismans, an essential topic. Meg slides you a stool, and the captains shuffle around to make room. The masked citizen buys you a drink of their own invention. It is violet and foggy. The plucky baroness gives you a brisk, encouraging grin. Ask away. Yeah, so this is kind of like tutorial stuff, but I did not actually do this before, and I don't know it, so let's do it. How can you buy and sell goods? You can sell practically anything at a big trade hub like New Winchester, the baroness answers. If you want to buy, though, you'll need to travel to more distant ports. Each specializes in a particular export. Meg spits chewing tobacco onto the floor. No money in buying at market prices and selling at them, too, though. You want to look for bargains. Or prospects of people offering better money. Buy cheap, sell dear. You can sell, not buy, any trade good at a major port. Lesser ports each sell a single good. 
you can see what a port ex exports by clicking on it on your map. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I don't think... I don't think that existed in Sunless Seas. Like, there was a similar sort of system where... If you wanted to trade stuff, you buy low, sell high, and, you know, you buy from a certain place, and typically you get more money if you take it to somewhere really far away. That sort of thing. Sounds like it's similar here, but being able to see what a port exports, its specialty, its, its cheap good, that I think is totally new and very handy. Uh, I don't need to ask about prospects. Well, mm, I will, actually. I looked at them when I played before, but there might be something about them that I don't know, so let's see. The masked citizen sips their drink. The biggest port in each region has a bazaar where captains do business. There you'll learn of people at other ports prepared to pay over the odds for a commodity. When you accept the commission for a prospect, it's yours. No other captain will pursue it. It's all fantastically civilized. Their smile is droll. You'll have to source the goods yourself, of course, says the bedeviled didact. Find a port that exports them. The client will want a certain amount. You can supply some or all of it. But if you provide all they need, they may furnish you with an additional reward. Okay. You can accept up to four at once. You may review and abandon them on the locomotive screen. Okay. Oh man, there's a lot of things to ask about. Ask them if they know of a good prospect available. In point of fact, I do, says the masked citizen, tapping an elegant finger on their elegant glass. The host at Magdalene's needs an urgent delivery of seeds, paying a pretty penny, too. If I were you, I'd get the bazaar. I'd get to the bazaar straight away, put my mark against it. Meg grunts. Broker in Port Avon is selling cheap seeds. Chirpy Chad, God knows why. His face looks like it's been pushed through a mangle. <laughs> an opportunity. Port Avon lies to the east of New Winchester, and Magdalene's lies to the north-northwest of New Winchester. Okay, are these going to be marked at all? These locations? Uh, hmm. Well, I can open the chart at any time. I don't think they are marked, are they? Can I... I can't add my own marks. Okay, I just wrote those locations and stuff down on my phone, so I have that if I need it. Ask about bargains. Where can you buy goods cheaply? Spatchcocker. Spatchcocker? <laughs> I, thought, <laughs> I thought someone was saying that, like, Spatchcocker, Meg wipes your... No, it's Spatchcocker Meg wipes beer foam from her lip. Now we're this busy. Deals are snapped up too fast here. Visit the bazaars at quieter ports. Can find all sorts. A limited supply, mind. The bargain won't hang about forever, though, the Baroness confides, steadfastly ignoring Meg's manners. So don't hang about. If you space in your hold, snap them up. You can always sell them at a major port for an adequate return. Okay, so buy lots of small things at minor ports bazaars. Bargains have finite supplies and duration. Oh, click on a port on your map to see if new bargains have appeared there since your last visit. Very cool. My inv my not inventory space, but uh, my hold space in my ship is pretty limited, though. Like, this is how much I have. I have five items already in my hold, and I can only fit twelve. Ask how to expand the prospects and bargains available to you. How to put this delicately, uh, is there perhaps a way that a resourceful captain could prejudice circumstances in their favor? Learn about affiliations and the opportunities they present. Meg laughs, a noise like a sneeze crossed with a ricochet. <laughs> it ain't who you is, it's who you know, isn't it? Nepotism. <laughs> she taps her broken nose. Nepotism. Quite, the masked citizen remarks. The wider your circles, the more advantageous the opportunities that will present themselves. A wise captain makes the most of them. As your captain increases in level, your affiliation increases. Uh, Academe? Bohemia, Establishment, and Villainy. They will unlock new, more rewarding bargains and prospects. 
Affiliations allow your next captain to inherit certain resources should the unthinkable happen. Hmm. That's just making me think. With the difficulty I chose, I could either reload or continue with a new captain. So I don't have to reload. And, I mean, the same thing... I, I could have continued my original playthrough of Sunless Seas with a new captain, but... I, I tried that and, like, I did all the math and looked at what I would start with and things like that for the new playthrough, and... I would, practically speaking, would have been back at almost square one. It erased almost all of my progress. But, you know, if this if this game maybe keeps more of your progress between captains, if I don't have to redo everything, I might actually consider, if I die, starting with a new captain. If I think it's interesting and not just horrible, like it would have been for Sunless Seas. So right now, I think our only positive affiliations are Akka... Akka I want to say Academia, but it says like Academia or something. I'm going to say Academia. We have affiliations with Academia because we're sort of a student, professor, researcher kind of thing. I've heard enough for now. Anything to talk about? Nope. Okay. I learned a lot there. That was very good. Onwards? Yeah, there we go. Was that the whole city explored? No, that was the promise of days. Let's inquire about the Winchester War. The slow-burning war for the Reach forms the backdrop to daily life in New Winchester. Citizens wishing to keep up with developments in the war turn to the New Gazette. It is famously the only newspaper worth reading in New Winchester, as well as the only paper that hasn't bankrupted itself. Its quality speaks for itself. Here you can read about the progress of the war, check your reputation with the factions, and who currently controls the Reach. Let's see who currently controls the Reach. The Assembly runs New Winchester from Victory Hall and seeks to strengthen its hand in the Reach. London's proxy, the Windward Company, however, maintains a considerable presence in the Reach. Although New Winchester is still neutral ground, tensions are mounting within and without the port. So is the tension between the Assembly and basically London, London's proxy, the Windward Company? I want to learn more about those factions. I'm sure we will. I mean, we after after all, we are revolutionaries, so we're going to have opinions. <laughs> And we're going to take concrete actions with regards to the war and who should have power and things like that. But I just don't understand the situation yet. Learn about your reputation with the Tacades and the Stovepipes. Probably have no reputation, right? Your name does not appear in any of the tackety focused reporting on the war. Apparently you are not considered worthy of comment. Same with the Stovepipes. Recruit the Uncautious Driver. I specialize in test driving, but I'm looking for something quieter. Yes, yeah, so you can recruit kind of special people. You have two types of people that can be on your boat. Or, sorry, Sunless Seas. It's not a boat, it's a train ship. Yeah. What do I call it? Ship doesn't feel right, honestly. I think I'm just going to call it a train. Um, there's two types of people that you can have on your train. There's generic people and actual named special people. So generic people is this number down here. It's just your number of crew. Right now we have 8 out of 10. Those are just generic people that are needed to keep your, your ship or your uh, train running. If it falls below a certain amount, something bad happens. I don't remember what. I think if it gets to zero, that means everybody has died, including you, and you die. Or something like that could work differently in this game, but you don't want that number to be too low. You want to have as much crew as possible. And named people, like the Incautious Driver, can have stories. So they can have like story events and quest events, and you can learn more about them. And they also give you benefits. You can assign them to a position in your officer's thing. 
over here. Like, you can have a first officer, quartermaster, signaler, chief engineer, and mascot. This person's going to be an engineer. Let's grab him. I specialize in test driving, but I'm looking for something quieter. The driver indicates a crashed engine, still smoking. Like that, without the screaming. Gotta pay him a sign-on fee. Gonna cost... 20. It's... It's weird that the cost seems to be stated right at the very end. You unlocked this with 149 sovereigns. You needed 20. You gotta look for that little you needed thing to see how much it actually costs, which is really weird. I wish it was just... I wish I just displayed the number right here on top of the money, and you didn't have to mouse over it. Uh, this will get you a chief engineer who will increase your iron by 6, your hearts by 2, and your uh, affiliation establishment by 1. Yeah, so that's just great all around, only costs 20 coins. Totally worth it. The driver boards, eager to get started. I recently parted ways with a windward company, they explain. Personally, I think a crash a week isn't so bad. They disagreed. Oh well, live and learn. <laughs> Great. Okay, let's assign them. Bloop. Now I got them. Can we talk with them? Yeah, we can like click on them and talk with them. Let's not do that just yet, though. I already feel like I'm front loading just like a lot of stuff before we really kind of get going. I kind of am. I am front-loading, but at the same time, this game is mostly a text adventure, for the most part, so it is mostly about reading stuff and choosing options and managing resources like this. But there's going to be a lot of exploration, too. Uh, opportunity, the fastidious inspector. Sure. Excuse me, Captain. A woman pushes through the crowds toward you. She is short and square-shouldered in a neat black suit and polished shoes. She shows you the case of her pocket watch. It's embossed with the crown and hourglass of London's hor horological, horological office, the body responsible for ensuring time is consistent across the Empire. I'm hoping to book passage to Port Prosper, she says, slipping the watch away. I, I can, of course, pay. Of course. Offer her passage. Thank you. The locomotive I was on broke down following a boiler rupture. The chief engineer's fault, I suspect. A gentleman, fonder of brandy than of diligence. Here, an initial sum to seal our bargain. Initial sum of 50 sovereigns, that is really good. Prosper lies to the north, northeast of New Winchester. Not that there is such a thing as north, south, east, or indeed west out here. Instead, London cartographers picked four of the brighter, more reliable stars visible from the Empress's new palace and named them north, east, south, and west. Londoners value familiarity. That's a really cool little detail. Okay, I should write this one down as well. Prosper is in the north, northeast. So the fastidious inspector doesn't take up like cargo space. It's not they're not considered part of the hole or anything like that, or the the crew rather. They're kind of just an extra thing. Where was it? Uh, hold. Yeah, they're considered. It's kind of weird to say this, but they're considered a possession. Basically, this is where stuff goes that doesn't actually take up any room on your ship, really. So they're just kind of there, not taking up any space. I think they'll stay there forever until you get to where they want to go. At least that's how it worked in Sunless Seas. Oh, speaking of actually, let's show you the hold. So, we have... Yeah, this is our ship, and we can buy a different... Ship. <laughs> this is our train, and we can buy different trains actually, upgrade to, to better or just different ones. There's ones that are just all around better. And there's also ones that are sort of specialized a little bit differently. You know, some meant for combat, some meant more for storage and transport. So right now we have two spots for guns. We just have the one Jerusalem cannon. Empty spot for plating, empty sp spot for bridge and auxiliary. And a filled slot for our scout. Our diffident bat. Its opinion is clear. It, go out there, in this weather... Thank you, but no. I like that bat. Ambition and old friend. 
Following your return to New Winchester, you were eager to meet up with an old friend. So I think this... Yeah, this is also new and wasn't there last time I was here, so I think this is the ambition... Yeah, this is the ambition that it has to do with finding the truth. She is an earnest agitator. You were firebrands together. You kept one another's secrets. Even in dank brick cellars where special constables bloodied their knuckles on your ribs and jaws. Ugh. Wow, we got our hands really dirty then, huh? Like we were in it. We've been... Tortured, I guess. For the revolution, in time you learned to temper your fires with guile. You were in this for the long haul. When London relocated, <laughs> you went with it and resumed your activism in the heavens. Let's just stop for a second. I love this line, when London relocated. Also, what happens if you didn't go with London? Like, I mean, did they just leave everything down there? Obviously, they take a bunch of supplies and stuff, but I mean, you couldn't, couldn't take everything. Was it just a ghost abandoned underwater place, or, or what? Your friend somehow acquired a locomotive, the Azaz... Uh, Azazel? Azazel. Perhaps it was a gift from her patrons. Perhaps, as some said, she was the black sheep of a wealthy, old blood family. She took her cause to the far corners of the sky. She's still captain of the Azazel. Or is it Azazel? I don't know. And associates with a group of seasoned captains who gather at the Promise of Days here in New Winchester. Perhaps you can find her there. Oh, so I guess we go back there, because we were just speaking with those captains. Yeah, okay. So explore the city, Promise of Days, inquire after the Earnest Agitator. Ah, she speaks of you often, the plucky baroness says. I'm afraid you've missed her. We've all been missing her recently. Busy girl, but she's doing important work in London. The bedeviled didact frowns darkly and fingers one of his amulets. We've been assisting in our own small ways, but, well, she'll want to explain herself. She left a letter for you. Meg pulls a crumpled envelope from the pocket of her patched coat. I'd open it somewhere private. Or someone, she clears of the masked citizen, will try to read over your shoulder. The masked citizen nods unapologetically. It's true, I'm a disgrace. <laughs> read the letter elsewhere in New Winchester. Oh, it says included a coded message. Can you decipher it? Oh. Go elsewhere. Is it an event to read, or do I just, like, go into my inventory? Yeah, you just read it here. Privately, you examine the letter. The earnest agitator's handwriting, never neat, is clearly hurried. There are, se there are several unfinished train of trains of thought angrily struck through. She writes, coyly, of having embarked on a journey of the most fundamental discovery, and of having uncovered celestial secrets. She says she wants to discuss her progress with you, but does not say where or when. The envelope also contains a collection of unfinished crosswords cut from the newspapers. Ah. I can't decode it because I need two savage secrets. Okay, so I gotta progress more in the game to do this. Oh, let's go ahead and repair and get some more crew. Um, the engineers at the Wolvesey Yard claim they can repair anything, whether the damage was caused by an unfortunate collision, a Point Blake salvo, or the charge of a crotchety cantankery. They'll fix it. Yeah, you can do a partial repair or a full repair. It's going to cost one for each... Wait. Wait, I thought it just costed one for each point repaired. This says it costs 30. Wait a minute, three sovereigns per point of hole you've lost? I thought it was one. Is it actually different from what it was last time I played? Huh. Well, anyway, I'm definitely not leaving port without a fully repaired ship. I learned that in Sunless Sea. You repair your ship every damn time you can. 
back up to full. Let's hire on more crew. Your voyages have grown perilous of late. Numbers and morale are lower than they were. Today, New Winchester is abuzz with a rumor. A famous tackety captain has turned tail and fled back to London, promised a generous pension and a full pardon in exchange for selling secrets. His crew are at a loose end, and under a cloud of suspicion. Will they ever find work again? Hire some of the turncoat's crew as replacements. No one else will have them. For the cost of a round at the promise of days, they're yours. <laughs> yeah. Get a bunch of crew for just ten sovereigns? That's a great deal. A fresh start. Initially, the crew members are suspicious. They think you might be a journalist for the Gazette. Still, they're happy to drink on your coin, and as the night progresses, their reserve vanishes. When they arrive at your engine the next day to sign their papers, they come with headaches and nausea in the last of their things. They go to their berths, ready to make for the stars again. Crew quality is now 10. Alright. I feel like I'm still missing something. Oh, right. It's in the shops where I'll find the thing where I can get the uh, prospects. Is it the bazaar? Yeah, these are the prospects. Okay, we'll do that in a minute. Um, let's investigate the black box, shall we? Captain Whitlock has left it to you in the hold of the Orphean. Her will described it only as a black box, a description you consider to be an unhelpful understatement. It is a casket of black basalt, longer than you are tall, unadorned with a single small recess that contains a keyhole. Alright, this is clearly some very creepy magical device that emanates great evil. I mean, it's made out of black basalt. That's gotta be so heavy. It's made out of rock. Stands up right in the corner of the hold where the crew have pushed it out of the way. Oh, also says the thing must weigh most of a ton. Consider what to do with it. Try and remember when Captain Whitlock acquired the box. Examine. Okay, yeah, there are a lot of things to do, including a lot of things that require things I don't have. This is quite the mystery, huh? And a bit creepy. We could just sell the box as a curiosity. Without saying what's inside, you won't get much for the box, but at least you'll get it off your hands. The higher your affiliations, the better price you will receive. Yeah, that's... God, who would do that? Consider what to do with it. The last request of Captain Amelia Whitlock was for the box to be transported to a specific address in London. Um, oh wait, this is just the same description that we got a while ago. Yeah, sell it or deliver it or whatever. I'm trying to remember when Captain Whitlock acquired the box. Captain Whitlock had it brought on board just before your ill-fated expedition to the Blue Kingdom. This is probably part of what they spent all their damn savings on. They brought some freaking demonic box on board for whatever weird stuff they were going to do. I don't like this box. It was empty then, you know, because you saw the lid and the box carried on board separately and assembled in the hold. It's not empty now. It is sealed and even heavier than before. Hmm... But you left for the Blue Kingdom shortly after the box was delivered and made no stops on the way. So whatever is inside the box now, Captain Whitlock found in the Blue Kingdom. The Blue Kingdom is one of the domains of the dead, right? And now this box, which is big enough to contain a person, now contains something and is heavy. Does it contain a person, a body? Maybe it's Captain Whitlock themselves. Some sort of, like, reincarnation thing, and that's why they said it was worth it, even though they were dying and now obviously died. Let's examine it. It has the dimensions of a sarcophagus plundered from the tomb of some forgotten prince of Egypt. There are no carvings or inscriptions on it. The join where the lid meets the body is too thin to admit even a knife blade. There are no holes by which light or air might find their way in, it's impossible to see inside without opening it. Even the keyhole has been engineered in such a way as to prevent peeking. 
The recess with the keyhole, though, as far as you can determine, that is a more recent addition to the box. The stone has been drilled and chiseled away to create space for a modern metal lock. Okay, that's all I can do with it. Other than other things I can't do yet. So I think I already have... Yeah, I already have the affiliation with academia to do this, but I need an uncanny specimen. So yeah, all sorts of stuff to like research it and find out more about it. Pick the lock yourself. Ooh, savage secret. 49% chance of success. I wonder what happens if you fail. You probably just break the lock and can't get in that way anymore. Detonate the lock with a modest explosion. <laughs> Perhaps not. I think we're done with it until we are more skilled. Okay, to the shops. The Bazaar. Locomotive captains gather the Bazaar to trade goods and information. You can acquire prospects, opportunities to sell goods at a distant port for an excellent price. Yeah, we already know all about prospects, so I don't need to describe that or anything like that. New prospects available in 30 days. I wonder how fast time passes. It seemed to pass pretty fast when we were just heading to New Winchester. You know, the dates on the captain's log thing. We're actually advancing. So 30 days is probably not very long. Need seats for Magdalens and bronze wood for Port Avon. Magdalens provides comfort and sympathy to the weary skyfarer. Its hosts will tell you any lie you need to hear. Some of those lies require flowers. The amenable host wants up to three sacks of verdant seeds and will pay 80 sovereigns for each. Magdalene's lies to the north, northwest of New Winchester. Claim that. Bronzewood. Cricket season is nigh. Mr. Sharma of Port Avon will pay for five consignments of bronzewood to furnish the village team with bats, bales, stumps, shin pads, and protective cups to minimize damage to delicate areas. Port Avon lies to the east of New Winchester. Yeah, might as well just grab them all because we can always get rid of them if we have too many and need a new one. I think you can have up to five, I think it said. Abraham's Engineering. What is this? Is it... I hope it didn't... Oh, good. It didn't crash. Just took a really weirdly long time to load. Oh. Sun the Sky... Okay. Sun the Skies is not responding. Just popped up for a second. But I think we're good? It is weirdly laggy. Just... Switching between buying and selling takes, like, three seconds. That's making me uncomfortable. Anyway, Abraham's Engineering can buy... Oh, that's for selling. Can buy another gun for a hundred. We can actually afford that. Uh, I guess there's no particular reason to look at this stuff until I can afford it. Almost none of this I can buy. But yeah, it's just general upgrades for the train. Weapons and upgraded quarters and shielding and stuff like that. More cargo bay. Victoria Market. Yeah, everything is super laggy. Hmm. Stalls and shops, hawkers and brokers. You can sell practically anything at the Victoria Market. Right, so being a major market, this is where we're going to find normal prices for stuff. Small markets might have deals on things like fuel and supplies. The thing is, though, you really, really do not want to run out of this stuff. I mean, like in Sunless Seas, if you run out of fuel, you're stranded in the water and that's it. I think you just die at that point, slowly, as your crew is consumed by terror. There is a terror meter down here, by the way, just like in Sunless Seas. So I super don't want to run out of that, but I also don't want to waste money on it, so... Uh, 20 coins for that, 30 for that. Um, mm, I'm not going to buy it. Oh, in the engine yard, that's where I could go to buy new trains. They're very expensive, though. Cheapest is 1500 3500 3500 19500 That thing looks so fancy. Carpet thick enough to lose your toes in. Yeah, none of that's happening anytime soon. I think 
that's it. We've repaired our hull, we've recruited a captain, gotten more crew, we've done every single gotten every single prospect and quest here. Yeah. Okay. I think this is a good time to end the episode. It's a good stopping point. I feel like we've gotten through the prologue and kind of all the preload information, and now it's time to really just start exploring this incredibly huge and I'm sure fascinating place. I'm so... I'm so ready to play this game more. I... I fucking love it so far. I love Sun of the Seas. I love this so far. It seems just as good and better than the original Sunless Seas. They've obviously taken a lot of things from that kind of formula and used it, but improved it and added some stuff. And I'm just so ready to explore this place. The Reach. And all these other zones. Eleutheria. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed so far, and when I return, I think I'm going to head to one of those locations that I wrote down the directions for to go buy some seeds or some other thing to do one of the prospects. <laughs>